Good afternoon, everyone, and happy World Hearing Day. My name is Gabby, joined here with Natalie Lenzen, who is an audiologist at Boys Town National Research Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking all about hearing. So hearing testing, hearing loss, hearing aids, cochlear implants, all of that good stuff. So if you are watching live with us this afternoon and you have any question for Natalie related to hearing, please feel free to leave them in the comment section of this video and we can get your question answered at the end of the stream. And also make sure you give this video a like and share it so other people can watch it and celebrate World Hearing Day with us. So Natalie, how are you doing today? Hi, good, Gabby. Thanks. How are you? Good. It's awesome to have you on. Natalie and I were just talking right before we went live. We have done a few hearing-related ones, but we've never sat down to chat together, so it's great to have a new face on. Thanks. Awesome. So, Natalie, could you begin by telling us a little bit about your role at Boys Town? Sure. Yep. So I'm a clinical audiologist at Boys Town. I've been at Boys Town um, for total about 10 years, and I'm also um, a manager in the department. So my role is to see patients in the clinic, both kids and adults, um, and also um, kind of supervise uh, our clinical audiologists and make sure that our clinics are well staffed so that we can see all of the patients. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So going into some of our hearing questions, we'll start kind of at the beginning. How is hearing tested? Sure. That is a really common question, um, especially because at Boys Town, we test both kids and adults. And the ways that we test hearing are a little bit different depending on the age. So for adults, it's um, more what people kind of picture for a typical hearing test. You're in a sound booth, so it's a very quiet room. You're wearing headphones or insert earphones. And we're testing to see the softest sound that someone can hear. And we're also testing to find out how well somebody understands speech at a very soft level and at a louder level, because all of those are so important for communication. Mm -hmm. There's another part that we do with hearing testing where we put a little headband on and it sends the sound um, through vibration. And that's always a surprising part of the hearing test. <laughs> People yeah. wonder, how can I, how can you test my hearing if it's not in my ear? And so that's always a fun thing that we talk about. Yeah. For kids, because kids can't always raise their hand or press a button when they hear the beep, um, sometimes we'll play a game where they'll put a toy in a bucket or do a task when they hear the beep. Um, for younger kids, uh, usually about six months to maybe 18 months or two years of age, we play sounds through the earphones or from speakers and teach the kids to turn and look to sounds and they see a light up toy to enforce that they looked in the right direction when they heard it. And then for babies um, or people who can't participate in traditional testing, we do testing called auditory brainstem response testing, which is um, when someone is sleeping or laying very still, we can send a sound in the ear and measure the response um, through electrodes directly or indirectly from the hearing nerve. And that's another way that we can gain hearing information. So lots of different ways to test. <laughs> yeah, I love that you mentioned too that Boys Town Hospital does both children and adults, because I think a lot of the time we think either one or the other for those types yeah. of things, but it's great to know that anyone can go to Boys Town and get their hearing tested. Absolutely. Our staff is really um, just experienced in working with both kids and adults, and we our population that we see in the clinic is about 50% adults and 50% kids. Mm -hmm. So we like to say we see patients age zero to 100 yeah. <laughs> or older. <laughs> the whole lifelong thing. So that's great. Exactly. Yep. So how often should children and adults get their hearing tested? Because I know like a lot of kids will get it tested at school. That's mandatory. But maybe when you're older, it's not as much of a priority. Right. Yeah. So kind of a blanket statement would be that um, if you ever have concerns about your hearing, you should get your hearing tested. So if you have concerns about how your hearing sounds around you um, as an adult, um, then that is a great time to schedule a hearing test. And the same goes for children. If you have concerns about how children are responding to sounds around them or concerns for speech and language development, that is also a great time to schedule a hearing test. For adults, one thing that we do keep in mind is as we age, our risk for hearing loss increases. So um, 
as adults get older, we always encourage that uh, we get a baseline hearing test. And then once um, adults are over 65 and may be covered by Medicare, then um, hearing falls under the need for medical necessity. And so it's important that they talk to their primary care physician about concerns for their hearing so that they can get a referral to get their hearing tested and have it covered by their insurance. Yeah, that's great to know. So if hearing loss is detected, what is that next step? Sure. So it kind of depends on the uh, person's specific situation, but in general, the audiologist will identify that there's a hearing loss and then talk with the patient about a plan. So this might include um, coming back for a repeat hearing test. It might include coming back to talk about hearing aids or other devices. I mean, it might also um, include seeing one of the ear, nose, and throat doctors at Boys Town. Mm -hmm. And audiologists work really closely with ear, nose, and throat doctors who will um, assess the patient from kind of a different perspective than the audiologist does. They're looking at kind of the whole um, larger medical view, reviewing various symptom systems and how that could kind of contribute to a hearing loss. And so we work together as a team to make sure that we um, are kind of learning everything we can about the hearing loss and coming up with the best recommendations. Yeah. So how does Boys Town Ear, Nose, and Throat serve patients with hearing loss? I know there's many different kinds and methods to helping, so what are some of the ways? Yeah, for sure. So Boys Town Ear, Nose, and Throat is made up of um, really a big team of professionals. So you have um, ear, nose, and throat physicians, um, some with specialties in um, neurootology, which is, you know, really specific surgery um, and really uh, specific to uh, children or adults with hearing loss. Um, audiologists, of course, so those who are going to diagnose and treat hearing loss. We have a physical therapist on our team for people with balance disorders. There's speech language pathologists at Boys Town um, that work on speech and language development for those with hearing loss. So we have a really big, wonderful team that can really address um, any concerns related to hearing loss from many different ways. Um, and so that might be um, working with your audiologist to make sure that your hearing aid is fine-tuned correctly or that you can get a hearing aid or a device that would be appropriate for you, um, making sure that your ears are healthy by seeing the ear, nose, and throat doctor. And then if there are any speech and language concerns, especially for kids, then they can also see one of our speech pathologists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about, you know, Boys Town Healthcare in general is that when you think of hearing, yeah, you think of your ears, but you don't always think of all the other different components. And Boys Town is so on it about, you know, making sure we're caring for the holistic patient and all of those different needs. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Absolutely. Yep. Um, balance disorders is another area that we really specialize in. And so people who feel dizzy, um, we do quite a bit of testing. It's an audiologist's job to test if someone's dizzy and find out if it's your inner ear that could be causing your dizziness. Um, so that's another um, kind of big part uh, that we do um, for people with hearing concerns or balance concerns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. So the next question is, what are some of the different, more common types of hearing loss? Sure. So typically we talk about three different types of hearing loss. So one that many adults um, will know about and is the most common hearing loss for adults is sensory neural hearing loss. And that occurs when there's damage to the structures in the inner ear, like the little hair cells that are in the inner ear um, and their connection with the hearing nerve. And this can happen um, due to many different reasons. So aging, noise exposure, medication, um, blood flow to the inner ear. Uh, there are so many different kind of causes for hearing loss and they don't occur in a vacuum. So they kind of all play um, a role together. Tinnitus or ringing in the ears is a really common symptom of this sensory neural hearing loss. So a lot of people will report that, yes, my ears ring, um, and that can be due to having hearing loss or having um, some damage from noise exposure. Mm -hmm. 
Another uh, type of hearing loss is called conductive hearing loss. So this is hearing loss when something in the outer ear, if you think about where your ear opens and then the ear canal, so something that could be in there or past the eardrum into the middle ear. Something may block um, or kind of obstruct sound getting into the inner ear. And some common types of conductive hearing loss are things that many of us have experienced like an ear infection. So if your middle ear fills up with fluid, it can temporarily muffle your hearing. Yeah. There can also be things that, um, different things that can grow in the middle ear or problems with the middle ear bones mm -hmm. that can cause that same um, type of hearing loss where it affects how sound gets into the inner ear. Mm -hmm. And then the third type is called mixed hearing loss because it is both the sensory neural hearing loss and the conductive hearing loss. So it could be someone with that sensory neural hearing loss that also has an ear infection, for example. So they have kind of two reasons why they might be having hearing loss at that particular time. Um, and there's kind of certain patterns that we see on our testing that we review with every patient um, on how all of these would look on our test results. And we talk about that in detail at our appointments. Gotcha. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for describing all those. And sure. with the tinnitus, like you said, it's a common one. We have actually done on our Facebook page before some yeah. panels on tinnitus. So I will make sure to link those in the comment section if anyone's watching and wants to check those out. Absolutely. I think most of the time people will describe that they have tinnitus. Um, sometimes they'll notice that even before they might notice that they're having trouble hearing, mm -hmm. um, especially if they have been around loud noises, um, maybe worked around loud noises, done any hunting or shooting. Um, those things uh, can very much cause that ringing in the ears and it's very noticeable for some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, of those three kinds you mentioned, how off, or how are how is hearing loss treated in those situations? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So um, we'll start maybe with conductive hearing loss this time, um, because that is sometimes a hearing loss that can be treated with um, medication or with a surgery. So for example, if you have an ear infection, um, sometimes medication can address it. And this is something that an ear, nose, and throat doctor would do is determine if a medication could help or surgery. So for um, some people, they might have tubes placed. Um, these are kind of common things that people maybe have heard of, whether they've experienced it or other people in their lives have experienced it. Um, so that is a more common type of hearing loss that could be treated with um, maybe an actual surgery. However, for a lot of hearing loss, especially sensory neural hearing loss, there isn't always a surgery or a medication that can treat it. So then we look to manage um, and treat it a different way by using devices. So hearing aids are a really common thing that we recommend for people who have hearing loss, especially a hearing loss that's more permanent, like a sensory neural hearing loss. Um, and for people who can't benefit from hearing aids or have severe to profound hearing loss, then there's something called a cochlear implant, which is another type of device that can be used to treat and address hearing loss. Mm -hmm. So what is a cochlear implant? Maybe for our viewers who are unfamiliar. Sure. So Boys Town has a um, separate department in the Lead Learning and Technology Center and the Center for Childhood Deafness um, that specifically um, focuses on cochlear implants. And a cochlear implant is a device um, that provides sound to someone who has um, very severe to profound hearing loss in one or both ears. And you can think of that amount of hearing loss as someone who, um, if they're around people talking in normal conversation, they would not be able to hear people talking. Mm -hmm. oh, and then if they wear hearing aids, um, they don't really benefit from the hearing aids. The hearing aid can't provide enough um, sound to make sounds um, clear to them. Mm -hmm. and so a cochlear implant is a device that comes from a surgery where there's an internal component placed in the inner ear or the cochlea um, 
in, in someone's ear. Um, and then there's an external component that um, attaches to their head or and then sits on their ear that picks up the sound and sends it to the internal electrode that works to stimulate, um, send signals to stimulate the hearing nerve. So it's a different way of hearing um, than something through a hearing aid, which sends sound through the ear into the middle ear and the inner ear and your cochlea picks up that sound and sends the signal to the brain. So it works a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually this past Friday, uh, February 25th was actually International Cochlear Implant Day. So we did share on our social media quite a few of our patient stories. There's Will, who is a college student at the University of Nebraska. There's Faith, who is one of our older patients. So go ahead and, and take some time to watch those because it really shows, you know, from early childhood all the way to, you know, late in adulthood, cochlear implants have helped a lot of our patients along with hearing aids. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Pretty amazing stories um, and really amazing to hear it coming from the patients themselves. Yes, I agree. So then when would a cochlear implant be used instead of hearing aids? Sure. So um, kind of like I mentioned before, so a cochlear implant is um, for a very kind of specific type of hearing loss and a specific kind of amount of hearing loss. So um, we kind of provide the label of severe to profound hearing loss usually it's for people who have that amount of hearing loss in both ears, but more recently um, it has been approved for severe to profound hearing loss in one ear. Um, and there has been some uh, good success with that. Um, and so the in that situation, then at Boys Town, we have a big cochlear implant um, evaluation process where the person interested in a cochlear implant gets to learn a lot about the devices, why it might be right for them, gets to meet with the ear, nose, and throat doctor, um, the audiology team to talk about their hearing aid, talk with the cochlear implant audiologist, and go through um, a process to learn all about the device and whether it's the right decision for them. Yeah, that's great. So what are the different types of hearing aids? Sure. So um, a lot of people um, look at hearing aids as just the style. So what does the hearing aid look like? And that's probably the first thing that we're going to notice, right? Um, so we have behind the ear hearing aids or BTEs, and those are hearing aids that sit behind the ear and a piece goes in the ear. Um, that brings the sound that is picked up by the hearing aid, brings it into the ear canal so that the person can hear the sound. And those can be um, a couple different sizes and different styles. Um, the size often is um, representative of how much kind of power or volume we might need for the hearing aid to provide. So if someone has more hearing loss, we might need a stronger hearing aid to make sure that the hearing aid can provide more volume to the sounds that it's picking up so that they can hear. Um, other styles of hearing aids are maybe a little bit smaller and have a thin wire that connects down into the ear. One of the cool things about those styles of hearing aids now is that they have usually have Bluetooth capabilities. Mm -hmm. So you can sync your hearing aids to your phone, um, sync your hearing aids to a tablet, um, sometimes to other Bluetooth devices. Uh, and that has really made a big difference in terms of access, um, mm -hmm. of being able to enjoy phone calls, um, being able to stream music, listen to media, um, connect to different programs. Um, that has really been a neat feature of hearing aids. So that's uh, the behind the ear style. The other style is something we call a custom hearing aid. So that is something where it is custom made for your ear. So we take an impression of the ear and then the hearing aid is made, sent to the manufacturer and made just for that ear. And it's, um, it's great because one, it's only one piece. So if somebody has concerns about maybe manipulating small um, pieces or getting a hearing aid behind the ear and a piece put in the ear, it's a little bit easier because it's just one piece to put in the ear. Mm -hmm. 
And um, because it's custom made, typically it fits very, very well. And these can be very discreet. They can be very tiny and fit down in the ear, or they can fill up kind of the full bowl of the ear so that it's easy to take in and out. Mm -hmm. And a cool part about those hearing aids now is that um, both the behind the ear style and this custom style are rechargeable. So oh, yeah. you take them out and just pop them into a charger at night. Nice. They charge and you're ready to put them in when you start the day. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to worry about batteries and things like that. I was that. just gonna say, I know people <laughs> complain often about the bat having to always change them and order them, so that's yes. very cool. Yeah, that has been, I think the Bluetooth and the rechargeable technology have been two of the biggest things that have really impacted um, people who wear hearing aids in a really positive way. It has it really improved just how you interact with your hearing aids every day. Yeah. and has made it a little bit easier. <laughs> right. I know we're always looking for an easier way, especially with something that's such a big part of, of the everyday. So absolutely. Right. Absolutely. There is one other type of hearing aid that um, may not be very common um, that um, people may not know about, but it's called an auditory osseo integrated device or an AOD. And it is a hearing aid that is a bone conduction type of device. So it can be worn on a headband or there can be a surgery to um, use that device to stimulate the inner ear through vibration. Mm. So for people who maybe um, don't have ear canals that are big enough to um, have a hearing aid or who may not have a pinna or an outer ear, these devices can um, be worn on a headband or have a surgery to kind of implant them on the head and then they um, send vibrations to the inner ear. So then people can hear that way. Yeah. The technology boys, is just amazing. I know. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So really there is um, kind of a device for almost every, for every type of hearing loss if someone is interested in pursuing a device to help them hear. And, you know, that's part of our job and working with the ear, nose and throat doctors um, to kind of make sure that people know what their options are. Um, and, and make sure that we answer any questions related to those types of devices. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we just have a few more questions for yeah. our viewers. Um, so if you're watching live and you have a question for Natalie, now would be the time to leave it in the comments so we can get it answered. And if you happen to be watching this later as a post recording or on YouTube and you have a question, uh, you can always message our inbox directly and I'm happy to pass along the question. Okay, so what, in your opinion, this is a pretty loaded question, <laughs> is the most important thing that parents and families should take away from this chat on World Hearing Day? Sure. So um, this year, the World Health Organization, um, in celebrating World Hearing Day, they came up with the motto, to hear for life, listen with care. So their focus, the World Health Organization's focus this year is to protect your hearing from loud sounds. Okay. Um, so wear hearing protection um, when you're even doing things like mowing the lawn um, or using power tools at home, um, working around loud sounds, um, making sure that your music isn't turned up too loud on your phone when you're listening to earbuds um, to protect our hearing, because that is the one thing we know that we can do um, to prevent hearing loss. Um, but when we kind of think about our hearing for life, one of our um, kind of big focuses at Boys Town is early detection of hearing loss. So for both adults and kids, so for children, if there's hearing loss, we can usually detect that right after they're born yeah. and, and start to um, kind of come up with the family on the best plan for communication and, and addressing um, any hearing loss that there is. So probably the biggest takeaway for this kind of World Hearing Day is that if there is a concern, whether it's for a kid or an adult, you can call us and we can get your hearing tested. And the, that is absolutely the right first step. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've said this a few times in our healthcare lives, but yes. it's true when we say like no issue is too small to call for. And yeah. we are always, always happy to help. And, you know, we can always return a call with help with help to answer your questions too. So don't be absolutely. Out. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> And speaking of reaching out, how can our viewers request an appointment with you or anyone else at Boys Town Ear, Nose, and Throat? Sure. So um, you can always go to our website um, and see um, all of the contact information for all of our locations. But our direct um, audiology line is 531 three five five six five two zero and that is what you can call to schedule an appointment with Boys Town Audiology and we have four different locations so we are on at the Pacific Street location on 140th and Pacific the East Hospital on 30th in California we have a mid-city location we call it at 72nd and Center and then also a audiology location in Council Bluffs, Iowa, um, that is in East Council Bluffs. So we have locations kind of all over the Omaha Metro um, so that we can serve um, everyone that is um, in our area. And again, just like you said, Gabby, um, always calling with any questions. We're always happy to answer questions, even if um, you're not quite ready to schedule an appointment yet. Yeah, definitely. And I'll make sure to link all of that information that Natalie just mentioned with the contact line, our website. You can request an appointment directly there if you don't want to call. And I'll also link a few additional Knowledge Center articles, patient stories, and other great resources that we have related to hearing for you to check out on this celebratory day. So Natalie, thank you so much for joining us. It was so great talking with you. Thanks, Gabby. This was great. Yeah, great. Well, everyone have a wonderful rest of your world hearing day and don't forget to get your hearing checked sooner than later. So thank you all. Have a great day. Bye.